Salam alaikum. There are two major events in human history that happened on the day of Ashura. Because of them, the Prophet ordered us to fast this day every year to remember those events. In this video, I'm going to talk about these two events in details and I will also answer some common questions such as why is it called Ashura? What is the reward for fasting this day? Why did the Prophet ask us to fast one more day before it or after it? What if I can only fast one day? And what if Ashura is on Friday? Is it makruh to fast it? And is it related to Moses or to Adam? Peace and blessing upon both of them. And more. So bring your coffee and let's start. The first major event that happened on the day of Ashura was the Exodus. God provided more than enough signs for Pharaoh and his people to believe. He gave Moses the ability to turn a stick into a snake. Also, he puts his hand under his armpit and it comes out glowing like a white lamp. Remember that Moses was a black man, having the ability to suddenly turn his black hand into a white glowing lamp is impressive. It was a great sign from God. Let's read Quran chapter 20 verse 20 to 22. Allah said, throw it down, O Moses. So he did and it became a moving serpent. Allah said, take it and have no fear. I will return it to its former state and put your hands under your armpit. It will come out shining white. This is another sign. When Pharaoh saw these signs, he persisted in disbelief with arrogance, even after all the magicians prostrated in front of Moses. This is why God showed him even more signs, but this time in a form of punishment. Quran chapter 7 verse 133 So we plagued them with flags, locusts, lice, frogs and blood, all as clear signs, but they persisted in arrogance and they were wicked people. And if you want to imagine how arrogant Pharaoh was, read Quran chapter 79 verse 24. فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى Pharaoh said, I am your Lord, I am the Most High. Imagine a man saying that about himself. After that, it was time. After all of these signs, it was very clear that they will never believe. And the next step was God ordering the Exodus. Quran chapter 20 verse 77 And we surely inspired Moses saying, Leave with my servants at night and strike a dry passage for them across the sea. Have no fear being overtaken, nor be concerned about drowning. Quran chapter 20 verse 78 Then Pharaoh pursued them with his soldiers, but how overwhelming was the waters that submerged them. And then comes the most important part of the story, here where you need to focus. Quran chapter 10 verse 90 as Pharaoh was drowning, he cried out, I believe that there is no God except the one whom the children of Israel believe in, and I am now one of the Muslims. Pharaoh is trying to repent at the last second. Then the next verse has the response. He was told, Now, now you believe? You always disobeyed and you were one of the corruptors. In my opinion, this is the most important lesson that we should remember every year while fasting Ashura. The point of marking this day every year is not just to fast and have your sins forgiven, no. It is also about remembering the lesson. Because a lot of Muslims unfortunately live in sin claiming that they will repent before they die. Listen to God's response to Pharaoh when he was trying to repent at the moment of death. Now, now you are repenting, after all you've done, after you said, I am your Lord, I am the Most High, after you deluded all of my servants, now you are saying I'm a Muslim? No, it's not accepted. Today, we will preserve your body so that you will become an example for those after you. And surely most people are headless to our examples. Please, Listen to this. فأتبعهم فرعون وجنوده بغيا وعدوا حتى إذا أدركه الغرق قال آمنت قال آمنت أنه لا إله إلا الذي آمنت به بنو إسرائيل 
الذي آمنت به بنو إسرائيل وأنا من المسلمين الآن الآن وقد عصيت قبل وكنت من فاليوم ننجيك ببدنك لتكون لمن خلفك آية فاليوم ننجيك ببدنك لتكون لمن خلفك آية وإن كثير من الناس وإن كثير من الناس عن آياتنا لغافلون وإن كثيرا من الناس عن آياتنا لغافلون I will preserve your body for all the people after you so you will become an example, a lesson for them, even though I know that most of them will not learn anyway. Don't be from the people who will not learn the lesson. Most of us right now are just lost in their lives, not thinking about the reality of this dunya, not caring that it might just end very soon, and there will be no chance for repentance after that. If you're postponing your repentance for years, Repent now, because God said in Quran chapter 31 verse 34, No soul knows what it will earn tomorrow, and no soul knows in what land it will die. Surely Allah is all-knowing and all-aware. Anyway, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him knew from the people of the book that the exodus happened on the tenth day of Muharram. And he said, أنا أحق بموسى منكم I am closer to Moses than you are And in another narration نحن أحق بموسى منكم We Muslims are closer to Moses than you And he ordered the Muslims to fast this day every year To celebrate the Exodus And you know that the Prophet hated doing something exactly like the disbelievers So he said starting next year I will fast one more day before it The ninth day this is why the Sunnah is fasting day number 9 and day number 10 of Muharram, celebrating this major event annually and remembering its important lessons. The second major historical event that happened on the day of Ashura is the repentance of Adam. Yes, both of them happened in Ashura. Quran chapter 2 verse 35 O Adam, live with your life in paradise and eat as freely as you please, but do not approach this tree or else you will be from the wrongdoers. When you look at Adam from your perspective, you might say something like, come on Adam, God gave you permission to eat all what you want from all of these trees around you. Why can't you just leave this tree alone? But if you think about it, this is exactly our situation too. For example, God gave us thousands of halal delicious drinks and fruit juices and whatever. He only forbade one drink. Why can't you just leave it alone? Another example, God gave us permission to eat a lot of animal meat and birds meat. Why can't you leave pork alone? It's just pork. God gave us permission to live all the amazing love stories that we desire with our spouses. Why can't you leave adultery alone? And the answer to all of these questions is always Satan. Iblis. Satan's job is to make the one haram tree look the most appealing and the thousands of halal choices look boring and lame. We all fall for Satan's trap several times in our lives, but Adam fell for this trap only once. He whispered to Adam, do you want to live forever? Do you want to have unlimited wealth? And then he said, I swear to God that this tree is the tree of immortality and infinite wealth. He couldn't imagine that someone has the courage to swear to God while lying. So he slept. 
and he believed Satan. And this was the mistake, believing Satan. Quran chapter 20 verse 120 But Satan whispered to him, saying, O Adam, shall I show you the tree of immortality and the kingdom that does not fade away? After Adam sinned, he immediately went back to God regretting his sin, asking for forgiveness. Then God taught him two important lessons. God taught him that he is all merciful, all forgiving, and all it takes to gain his forgiveness is just to repent, as easy as that. The second lesson is, Satan is your enemy. Don't let him deceive you ever again. Don't let him lie to you. Don't ever listen to him ever again in your life. If he tells you that adultery will make you happy, he is lying. If he tells you that drinks will make you happy, he is lying. If he tells you that cheating in your business will make you rich, he is lying. Don't fall for his trap. Quran chapter 20 verse 122 and 123. Then his Lord chose him for his grace, accepted his repentance, and guided him. Allah said, Descend both of you from here together with Satan as enemies to each other. Then when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray in this life nor suffer in the hereafter. The day of Ashura is the same day that God accepted the repentance of Adam. And it is your opportunity to repent from the sin that you have been doing for years. Why is it called Ashura or Ashura? The word Ashura is an Arabic word that simply means the tenth day, as in the tenth day of the month Muharram. What is the reward for fasting this day? The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, whoever fasts on the day of Ashura, Allah will forgive all the sins he made in the previous year. Of course, that doesn't include major sins and the rights of people. What if I can only fast one day, I can do both? The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him hated being like the disbelievers in any way. This is why he prayed to God for the change of the direction of the prayer, change of Qibla. This is why he ordered us not to pray before sunset and sunrise, to be different from the people who worship the sun. This is why he changed his hairstyle to be different than the people of the book. This is why he forbid al qaza to be different from the disbelievers. This is why he condemned the Muslims that will come after him who will copy the disbelievers in everything. And finally, this is why he ordered the fasting of one extra day so we be different from the people of the book. But if you really can't, it's out of your hand and you can only fast one day, then fast the day of Ashura and you will get the reward inshallah. What if it's a Friday? Is it makruh to fast it? It is makruh to fast on Friday because it's Friday. What does that mean? If you are saying, I am fasting Friday because I think Friday is a blessed day, this is why I'm fasting it, this is makruh. However, if you are fasting on a Friday because it's the day of Ashura, the day of Arafat, it's a Ramadan day, that is okay. The intention is what matters, not the day itself. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, deliver my message even if as small as one verse. Don't let this video stop with you, share it with your friends and also help it spread by engaging with it with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia law, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.